like as the world rebuilds and reinvents, there's a historic investment in infrastructure improvement projects, healthcare, climate change, fintech, mobility, digital transformation, renewable energy projects, a whole lot. Well, a closer look here reveals an economy in you know carrying out all of these projects although today is threatened by a lot of uncertainties in nigeria we have insecurity as a major threat to that globally even in nigeria so we do have uh, the war in ukraine and then we have in places like asia uh, the new lockdowns following covid 19 pandemic but let's uh, take a closer look at the opportunities in these areas and the challenges of course uh, with a business development leader at project management institute pmi africa george asamani joining us from the uk hi george good morning good morning and good morning to the viewers how are you i'm good 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 to have you on the show so um Yes, the, a lot of activities. Even in our last conversation, we talk about uh, government borrowing in Nigeria, and these uh, is supposed to feed into infrastructure uh, projects, you know. But sometimes it seems we overlook that that's an economy. How big, uh, at least let's focus on Nigeria, how big is that economy, the project management economy? You know, it's, it's a multi billion dollar uh, e economy. If you think about it, project management is everywhere, right? So everywhere in every industry, there's project management happening. So essentially, it's a sum of the multiple economies around the world. And when we say the project economy, what, what we mean is essentially the world where things are being done in a project-like like fashion. So it's not necessarily just within the, the profession of project management, but it's also people whose job title is not project manager, but they're doing project type work. So for example, uh, finance people who are implementing a new finance system, they have to get involved in project management. Obviously, civil engineers, they do project management. Someone who's doing uh, launching a new movie or creating a new movie, there's project management in there. So across multiple industries, there's project management involved. So it's, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Yeah, um, but uh, how conscious is the world about this economy because uh, we do know that uh, every every year for instance there are some funds budgeted for infrastructure uh, in the mm. private sector i mean it's it's a whole lot you just mentioned maybe an example of the creatives now how conscious mm. are people that really yeah. this is an economy that should be given intentional approach and strategy in order to optimize the potentials you know in that economy that, that's a great question. And I think, to be honest, many people think of project management as a skill within engineering or within construction. Um, many people do not think about it as a skill that is part of life in your everyday, in every sector. So I think that, that that's a great question. And you, you talked about the, the funding that is uh, put towards, for example, infrastructure projects or development projects. If you think about it, one of the largest streams of uh, funds coming into Africa is for development projects. And the word there is project, right? So it just shows how critical project management is. Yeah, and then uh, the other side of that would be the skills acquisition. Uh, because mm -hmm. if it's an economy, then you, didn't, you, you do need skills and personnel to manage it properly uh, how wh where on the top of the list of priority is that it's definitely a, a top five uh, priority you know if you look at for example mckinsey's report on what are the top five skills that companies who are moving into the future you know public project management is there if you look at you know some some of the leading african research organizations that look at for the future of Africa, what are the top five skills? Project management is there. So certainly in everyone's list of top five skills to have, whether you're a project manager or not, you should definitely be upskilling yourself from a project management perspective. Upskilling yourself could mean a number of things. It could mean you're actually looking for certification, going all the way to do, for example, the PMP, which is project management professional. You could go all the way uh, from a certification perspective or you could simply upskill yourself by getting some practice, getting involved in your uh, with a local PMI chapter. For example, this PMI Nigeria so is the chapter in Nigeria, Project Management Institute chapter. Get some practice there. Join the community. 
and you know you don't necessarily have to certify but just building that muscle of project management looking at how do i think of scheduling how do i think of risk management um, how do i think of of people management what are my soft skills what are my technical skills all this is uh, included in project management and i mentioned this because actually when people think of project management they mostly think of scheduling management but it's a lot more than scheduling management it's also looking at okay what is the what is the business case what is my business acumen with respect to uh, the the work that i'm delivering what's the business purpose for it so it's it 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 looks at outcomes as well as modes of, of delivery and what opportunities are there for nigerian businesses when we're talking about project management i think that there are loads of opportunities actually not only for businesses but for, for also for individuals right so if we look at first of all individuals we talked about the, the project economy we said uh, everything is a, everything is a project right that means that for many many individuals as long as you have that project uh, skill or project management capability, uh, there's opportunity for, for, for employment. And so that's on the, on the in individual level. In fact, one of our job reports show that 45% of new jobs over the next 12 months will require the skill of project management. So that's the, that's the opportunity for, uh, for individuals. For companies, I think the opportunity there is around uh, making an impact, right? And what, what I mean by that is, if you look at the population of our continent, between now and 2050, we're going to develop the largest workforce in the world. What that means is that we have an opportunity to, to be companies and to create companies that are going to service not only Africa, but service the world. So there's an opportunity for organizations to harness this talent and be the ones that are driving uh, the future of, of, of work, right? So I think there's a huge opportunity there for for organizations. Think about India and IT, what we call the global delivery model. In the 80s, you had several companies in India who thought, hey, we're actually pretty good at this software development. Why don't we start building it cheaper for companies in the in the States and companies in the US? Right? That's that's the beginning and the invention of what we call the global delivery model. Essentially build it cheap in India. And I think Africa has a similar opportunity in terms of just pure uh, 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 thinking pure talent within our, comp uh, within our continent to be able to deliver that globally, especially in this world where we have remote working as an opportunity. Mm, unfortunately, uh, mostly for Africa and Nigeria, we, we hear a lot of conversations about potentials uh, which are not uh, tapped because if, if you talk about uh, um, ICT, you talk about writing of programs, we do have the brains here, but it seems a lot of it is, uh, you know, just, just remains as potentials and, and sometimes this can, this can be really discouraging. Is this just about the environment or what? So that's, that, that's a great question, actually, and it, and it leads on nicely to uh, one of the things that we're working on as BMI. We have joined the number of organizations who are trying to make uh, an impact uh, within our continent. Uh, there are local organizations and international organizations that are working together to try to address this, right? And one of the ways that, that PMI is helping to address this, uh, this point about, you know, I'm not a software developer, how can, I, how can I make a difference or how do I harness my potential? We are providing solutions for, that don't, for example, require you to know how to code to build technology. And this is, this is the world of low code or no code technology. It basically means you don't need to be a software developer to be able to build an app. So there are these new kinds of technologies and new kinds of solutions that enable people to, to get involved and to make a difference and to use their potential or harness their potential without, uh, for example, being a, a, a developer. And so there are several initiatives that are going on in this background because we realize the point that you just mentioned. Um, George, uh, but, you know, is it, a business is slow to adopt, you know, innovation. Are they reluctant? You know, I, I, I think it's, 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 it's more about, uh, about the individuals in, in that business, just from, from my experience. And, you know, my response to that is always, you know, it, you can either take the, 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 
carrot approach or the stick approach, <laughs> right? Uh, the, the carrot approach being, you know, when we engage with, with organizations and get a, get a sense of how innovative or not are they, uh, the carrot approach is encouraging, encouraging them to say, guys, look, you could become the next huge global tech company. For example, the, the largest tech, the largest companies in the world today are those that have innovated. Think of Tesla, think of Alphabet, think of Apple. It's, it's simply where the world is going. So assuming you're existing as a, as a business to be successful, then to be successful, you've got you to innovate, right? So that's, that's the carrot approach. The stick approach, where it's rather about, you know, showing the, the, the negative side and, and using the stick, the old expression, innovate or die, right? H history shows that those organizations that don't adapt will struggle. It's, it's, it's simply the case. And in today's glo global world, where customers are exposed to the best of everything, if as an organization, you're not striving to in innovate and you're not striving to deliver the, the best or at least close to the best for your customers, you're likely to lose those customers to someone else who is actually trying. So yes, maybe it may not be easy for everybody to innovate, but innovation has to be on your agenda. If you, as a leader yourself, you struggle with it, that's fine. You can, you know, somebody else in the organization uh, can be responsible for it or hire people who will be able to bring that innovation into your organization. Because we all, we've all know, we all know companies that existed in the 80s or 90s and don't exist now simply because they did not innovate. Meanwhile, they were household names. So innovation is critical. And I'll, I'll encourage all companies to do that. Innovate or, die, innovate or die, that's really scary, but innovate I guess <laughs> that's the reality. Just before we let you go, the issue of brain drain in Nigeria, how much of a factor, deterring factor, do you see that being in the nearest future for Nigeria? Yeah, you know, uh, brain drain has been uh, a huge issue for, uh, for, for a long time, and I won't pretend to know all the answers for that, uh, what I do know is that it's it's complex and it's affected Africa in a huge, huge way. And I think it's not just companies that need to do something about it. The whole ecosystem needs to respond. So right from uh, educational institutions need to play their part, governments need to play their part, and of course, organizations need to play their part. But personally, what I'm really excited about is that, as I alluded to earlier, we're entering an era where remote working is becoming the norm. So we're starting to see people actually who have secured great jobs overseas or in Af other African uh, countries, but they're simply working remotely from the comfort of their own home in Nigeria. So what, what this does is that it, it helps to both retain the talent uh, within, uh, within the country or you know, at least prevent or slow down the brain drain, but whilst at the same time allowing individuals to take advantage of these growth opportunities in, uh, in, in other, in other uh, countries. And this is part of the advantage I was talking about in terms of the growing workforce. So as long as this growing workforce is skilled, then we have the opportunity to do this global delivery model that I, that I mentioned earlier on and to be able to serve, serve the globe uh, from, from Africa. All right. Uh, thank you so much, George Asamani, Development uh, Leader at Project Management Institute Africa. Thank you so much. We do hope that thank the you. message uh, is just out there. This time it's not just about the government. It's also about e individuals who acquire that skill that you need to be functional and uh, relevant tomorrow. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Appreciate it. You too. Thanks.